if you want to add anything, um, Deputy President, but I think, it, it, as was said by His Excellency, it was more a statement than anything. Um, so at this stage, I think we can close off our morning session. I'll hand back over to our MCs, uh, Makeda and Dave, and uh, Your Excellencies, our panel, if we could close off now. Thank you so much. Um, so thank you. Thank you very much. Um, sorry, I just, I think, um, I think the president was just asking me something. What's that, sir? Oh, you want a selfie? Oh, okay, sure. No problem. No problem. Anytime, anytime, Paul, anytime. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Oh, on his behalf too? Okay, he asked on his behalf too. You're there. There you are. All right, get in there. Uh, I'll sign it and send it to you on WhatsApp. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. All right, you may take your seats. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a round of applause to our panel. Thank you so much. Over to you. Thank you so much, Ravenico, and also to our guests of honor for that enlightening conversation. Merci beaucoup, merci. And of course, there is a, a lot more to come because, of course, this is only the very beginning. We will now be inviting our hosts and our guests of honor to take their official photo, and protocol will be guiding them out of the room. And to everyone else remaining, we do have a treat in store for you, but first, Mr. President, before you came into the room, we had been so impressed, as Ravenico said, by so many of the dance moves and the energy and all of the excitement that all of our delegates came with. And so I'd like to ask everyone here, as they're being led out of the room by protocol, to go ahead and give our guests of honor a very exciting exit. The DJ is going to allow Allow us to uh, make sure that the environment is right and protocol, if you will. Absolutely. Oui, un peu de musique pour accompagner nos invités d'honneur qui vont aller euh, prendre une photo officielle. Mais nous allons les accompagner avec la joie, la bonne humeur et de la bonne musique euh, que le DJ va nous mettre. Et bien sûr, on va les accompagner comme nous l'avons fait en les attendant. Avec de bons mouvements de danse et de la for joie et tout for ça. For sure, for sure. DJ, let's go. and the strengths that we can look at. It's a similar question to the one that His Excellency Kagame has just answered, but to lead on to that in post-COVID, to cleverly position ourselves and not be victims of anything and not say we've been left behind or that we've lost two and a half years. But let's talk about that. You're in a country where your youth have done wonderful things for you. You're on the cusp of change. You're about to take over for the next couple of years. What more can we do to look at the strengths and the opportunities post-COVID? Uh, thank you very much. <clears throat> Admittedly, the world economy has taken a great hit from COVID-19, but all is not lost. We have tremendous opportunities, and more so for our young people. And uh, from where I sit, the digital economy is the way to go. And our young people are the drivers of that economy. And more than ever before, there is a great opportunity because the digital experience, the internet, the ICT interventions has removed physical barriers across the world. You don't have to come to Rwanda physically to explore opportunities. From the comfort of your one small room somewhere with a smartphone, you can do business with people thousands and thousands of kilometers away. We must explore 
intellectual property. And that is the way to go more so for our young people because in terms of assets, land, which used to be those years to be the greatest asset, especially in Africa, is no longer available. Our young people must invest in intellectual property. I want to give an example in my country. We have a taxi called Uber. The young people who own that facility don't own a single car and they don't own an office. They have just created a system. Using that system, they are able to pull as many cars belonging to different people, connect the owners of the cars, and those who want to use the cab system to go somewhere. And through the use of technology, money keeps on changing hands, and the company has grown to a very big level. I want to say that uh, in terms of financial markets across the world, there are very, many, many, many opportunities that our people across the world can continue to exploit. And as we move forward, we must also move away from the traditional way of agriculture and move away from rain-fed agriculture to irrigation because of the effects of climate change. So even as many countries are feeling the effects of the post-COVID challenges, there remains very, very many opportunities in the tech world, in finance, in international capital. And all we need to do is that with the advent of internet and the ICT options, we want to encourage our people across the globe to reach out. A conference like this one, a summit like this one, is a great opportunity for people to make inroads and get to know what opportunities exist outside their home countries. I'm sure, I have no doubt in my mind that uh, before the end of this summit, some of the young people here who are suave in business matters have already made some connections and they have a new opportunity. So the real, real opportunity of dealing with post-COVID challenges is using technology to reach out so that we can explore new opportunities outside the traditional um, available uh, opportunities that have been put down by COVID-19. And therefore, the world is big, the stage is large. All we need to do is continuously engage. And I'm sure that uh, with that engagement, having removed the physical barriers that people don't have to meet to explore opportunities, a lot of opportunities are available mm -hmm. to help us put the world back to where it was before COVID-19. Thank you. Thank you very much, Deputy President. I think that confirms the message that this generation resonates with, that technology helps you to work smart without necessarily having to work hard. Um, now we'd like to move on to Honorable Minister Babazi. Um, speaking of technology and opportunities, we have this amazing summit that this country has birthed. The question now is, after we have left and we've all flown back to our countries in a couple of days and we wait for the next one next year, what happens in between and how do we manage to maximize the vision and mission of this summit to truly transform the continent? Thank you very much, our moderator, and welcome back home. Um, the question you're asking is about the way forward, and um, I want to appreciate our leaders for being present and for the support throughout this journey, whether 10 years down the road and also uh, five years of hosting Youth Connect. One of the main objectives was uh, in threefold, I would say, and that will inform the next steps um, post the summit. Uh, 